Welcome to another video from the Voyager uh, Middle School Steam Lab. This video is going to be about programming in Scratch. We are going to be practicing using loops to draw. So we've got some loops here in Scratch. We're using them to draw triangles. This is one of our Scratch practice videos. So this is not a project that my students will turn in. This is one we're going to practice together. The students will have to end up uh, programming something a little simpler than this to show that they know how to use loops in Scratch. So I just want to point out a couple of things here. We're using the new version, Scratch version 3. Um, the pen tool right here is an extension that you have to add from this menu down here. You can see that I've got comments throughout my code here. Um, if I click on them, they expand outwards so I can see what they were going to say. Uh, we're going to focus on making sure we have some comments on our code and making sure that we have a setup. A setup should be in every sprite, in every coding, how, where do we want to start things off so that if we stop things in the middle, we have a good starting point so we can consistently test. So we're going to build up to this. So the idea here is not to copy this code. My students are all given this code exactly like this. Um, the version I build might be a little bit different than this, um, but the idea is that you understand what each of these blocks does so that you can use them on your own later. Okay, so we are going to start with a new file. So I'm going to go File New, replace my current project. Okay, so I've got my cat. My cat is rather large. If I'm drawing on this this stage here, um, I can't really see what the cat is drawing. Let's let's give it a shot. So I've already got the pen pen block. It remembered I wanted that. But how to add it is you push Add Extension here, and then you can choose Pen, and that will allow you um, to use the Pen tool that was hidden in the new version of Scratch. So I'm going to draw something. So to draw something in real life, I would have to take my pen and I have to put my pen down. Um, whenever I put a pen down out, I'm also going to want to have a pen up because I want to stop drawing at some point. I also probably want to want an erase all block so that I can erase what's going on. This used to be called clear. Now it's called erase all. Um, I think they felt that might be a little clearer. Um, idea. So let's let's see. I put my pen down. But if I put my pen down and I don't move, nothing happens. So now I need to move. So let's grab a move 10 and just click it. And you can see at first I couldn't see anything because it was under the cat. But now as I move a little further and I click it more and more, I can see more underneath the cat. So that means um, one other thing I want to do is make my cat smaller. I can do that um, by shrinking the cat. So one way I can do that is go down here where it says size and just type in a new size. But as I was talking about with the setup, I'm going to add a comment here so I have an idea of my plan here. I want to have a setup um, so that I can, the, the purpose of a setup is to make sure that whatever was happening in the code, I always have the same starting point. So part of the same starting point would be the way that the, the cat looks. So that would be its size. So what if I change the size later on? Well, I probably wanted to always come back to 30%. So I come into looks here and I'd grab my set size block and I'd set it to 30% because I like how big that cat is. So that's going to be part of my setup. I'm going to label it right now so that I remember that this is the setup. Okay. And I can collapse down my comment like that so it's nice and small. Okay. And then I'm going to build things together here. You notice I'm not connecting anything yet. I'm just clicking on things. So right now if I move you can see I'm still drawing because I had my pen down. So maybe I'm going to label these. Pen down, the way it works is this is a start drawing block. Okay, and what usually happens is people will start drawing, but then they'll kind of forget that they're drawing. And if they do like a go to random position, they'll draw this big long line here everywhere they, they go behind them. And so that's not really what I want to do. I want to make sure that when I'm done drawing, I also stop drawing. Sort of like show and hide. We always want to have one when we have the other. Okay, so now we got start drawing um, and start, start drawing, stop drawing. Let's put it on either side of the move block. And my move 10 is a little small, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Let's go 50. And let's just draw something. So that draws a line. So again, I might want to label that. This makes a line. And it might feel like I'm putting a lot of comments in right now, but a good rule of thumb, especially when you're new to programming, is that you cannot really make too many comments. 
Um, you, you might seem like kind of silly, but as we add a lot of code, it's nice to have some human written language to figure out what's going on. So I can draw a line. Now I want to make this into a shape. So to make a shape, I got to draw a line and then I got to turn. So the turn is a little bit tricky. Um, if you know about equilateral triangles, you know that each of the angles in an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. So you might think I should type 60 degrees here. But the problem with that is the angle that I turned is this angle right here. That is the exterior angle, which creates an interior angle of 120 degrees. So I'm not going to be making a triangle like this. I'm going to be making a hexagon. So to make a triangle, I actually have to turn the complement of this. So if I have 180, what plus 60 equals 180? The answer is 120. So if I use that, I'll get my equilateral triangle. So you'll notice that to get that equilateral triangle, I had to click this one, two, three times. So that is why I need a loop. So loops are located in the control menu here, and we have a couple different loops. We have forever loops, which in most programming you, you kind of avoid, but for programming robots and games, we use quite a bit. And then we have repeat 10 loops. So this repeat 10, this 10 is just the default. I can change this to whatever number I want. And in this case, I definitely want three because that's how big a tri that's how many sides a triangle has. And I might add a comment here that explains that that's what the three is, or I might add a comment here that just says draws triangle. So I remember that that chunk right there is encapsulated by the orange is drawing a triangle. Um, we also have some other types of loops like the repeat until loop. Um, we'll learn more about those loops later. This is just the basics. So I've, now I've got code that draws a triangle. I've got a setup. Maybe I want to erase everything in my setup. Maybe I want my cat to go to a certain location. So I go to motion. This go to x, y. This takes me to, I'm going to put that actually before erase all in case my pen is down so I don't end up drawing a line I don't mean to draw. Um, I'm going to put this as 0, 0. 0, 0 is the origin. And in Scratch, they put that right in the center of the screen. Uh, which is the way you would do it in math class. A lot of computer programming would be up here, but in Scratch, they put it right in the middle for us. So there's my setup, there's my triangle. So get that set up, draw a triangle. The nice thing about this is even if I go to some random positions and draw some random triangles, if I hit this button and I draw my triangle, it'll always be the exact same triangle. Okay, so now I can do a nested loop where I just draw a bunch of random triangles. If you have not paused the video yet, try pausing the video and seeing if you can get a bunch of random triangles. All right, so now you should have random triangles. I can make it, instead of forever triangles, I can make a certain number, like I can say I want 50 triangles, right? And when I do this double loop thing, it gets a little confusing, so I definitely want to comment here saying, what's this 50 about, right? This is the number of triangles. And then I can even label this go to a random position down here because this go to a random position is not just going to a random position. This is what I do. This is what I do after each triangle because I want to change something. Otherwise, I'm just drawing the same triangle over and over again. So that changes something after each triangle. So I can change this block here to be different things. I can put the whole thing together. I can go to events and add it when the green flag is clicked. And now I've got a whole bunch of the random triangles. So we learned how to draw some things. If I was to do something similar to this with squares, this would count for my next assignment, but that's not what we're doing today. I also want to show a little, a few extra things. I want to show a little bit about variables. This is a little bit extra. Um, we can make a variable um, and you can just push this button and give the variable a name. We always want to give the variable a name that makes sense for what it is. In general, I like to say for all sprites um, because that will allow us to access it in other sprites. And we're going to make sure it's all lowercase and descriptive name, no spaces. So there we go. I have a variable called size. So now what can I do with this variable called size? Well, right now, if I drag it out here and I click on it, it just tells me it's zero. So I can set that variable in my setup. I almost always want to set a variable in my setup. I need to choose the correct variable from this list. And maybe I want to start with my size equal to zero. And then after I draw each triangle, 
maybe I want to change my size by one. So I'm gonna put this in the after I draw each triangle region here. Make sure it says size and not my variable. And instead of going to a random position each time, maybe I wanna stay where I am, but I want to just give it a little bit of a turn. So after each triangle, I'm gonna change my size by one and turn. So, okay. So let's go ahead and run this and see what what changes I've made. Why aren't my triangles getting bigger? Well, I, I you'll notice my size is going up, but I'm not actually using that size anywhere. When I actually come down to drawing the line, it's always 50. So if I put size there instead of 50, now it will use size to draw the line. And you'll notice when I'm doing this, that my size gets bigger up to 50, but you'll notice that the size of each of the three lines is the same because I don't change the size until after I draw the triangle. So it's really key where you're putting each of these blocks. Okay, um, When you're using the pen tool, you also have some color choices. So there's uh, a couple ways to set the pen color. One is just to choose a color. So I can put this up at the top and I can click on this little thing here and I can change my color like this change my brightness, get it all set up the way I want it, or I can use a color picker and just pick a color from the screen and then use that. But another way to set the color is to set the color by using a number. Then the numbers are nice because then you can change the pin color by a certain amount. So let's try that. So that way we get a kind of rainbow effect if I make these numbers. And I can make big changes by just adjusting the numbers and knowing which number does what, right? If I change this 50 to 500, I get a lot more triangles. If I change the amount I'm turning from 15 degrees to 2 degrees, it gives me a much different effect. So go ahead and try this out. This is not for us to turn in. This is something that we are going to use to practice for our next assignment, which is the Draw Shapes assignment. Hope you learned something from this and uh, try out making loops, loops inside of loops, and make sure you comment your code.